here's the blast off okay chat let the people know well, we're alive we're alive we're doing fucking dnc shit okay here it is i will glaze myself a little bit it's actually kind of shocking it's kind of shocking how fucking nice with it i am with this remote setup now like it's not even a problem like as long as i have reliable up down consistent internet reliable internet it is kind of wild how fucking nutty my my remote setup goes people kind of prefer the remote setup more you know what i mean why do you look like a plantation owner did you hire someone else to serve chat at the top of the hour thing uh i already ran a one minute ad break just now because it's only 35 minutes in you already know we don't do three minute ad breaks at the top of the hour this early uh if we're if, if i'm only if i'm only an hour uh if i'm only 30 minutes in i'm gonna just run a regular ad break a one minute sneaky one so how do you do irl streaming do you just have regular cellular data no i love when you travel but the house is a classic background okay so where was i what was i saying boom that's better um i like how the colors match everything is so off white cream it looks good yeah it kind of looks fake did you get your credentials yes march went and grabbed them um but basically they were uh the last part of the story is you know we went all there we went all the way out there near the convention near the convention hall okay we went all the way out there and we burned the morning basically because like we just were running around trying to fucking figure this out and it didn't work out it didn't work out at all um can you tell them to stop sending aid to israel bro yeah you got it um but um dr pepper zero or diet it's diet your camera is slowly sliding to the viewer's left no i i slid it myself just now um what's the protest situation apparently there's a protest going on and i will be going over there um protest going on and i will be going over there there's a uh, blinken says israel accepts u.s proposal to bridge gaza impasse and urges hamas to do the same this is what we said he was going to say i'm not fucking i'm i'm not saying shit on the on the ceasefire deal until hamas comes out and says this is the same deal that we wanted this is the same deal that we said yes to early on this is the actual deal i do not trust anthony blinken anthony blinken is a, a monstrous piece of shit fuck anthony blinken he has lied so consistently at the behest of israel that there is no reason for me to believe that he is being honest okay if this is the deal that hamas is saying is no good then yeah this deal is no fucking good anyway it's not the same deal yeah there you go so <clears throat> yeah trump using ai we got a lot to talk about today obviously we got a lot of news so we're gonna get into it in a second okay we're gonna get into it right now actually uh we already blasted off let's get started let's get it going don't get it twisted um hassan is reaching the normies with hot praxis so i feel like i'm yeah okay perfect perfect yeah is trump leaving uncensored early news what hold on oh yeah i i'm uh hot hotness praxis is reaching out to the normies ladies and gentlemen i told you guys already that this was going to happen and it's happening okay year of pr late so i'm a little bit confused about what's happening here i don't know anything about hassan piker is that his name hassan piker i do not follow him i do not watch his content not intentionally it just i just never really do it all of a sudden over the last like couple days my for you page has just been full of hassan thirst posts and my twitter timeline has been full of people talking about how badly they want to jump this man's bone how badly they want to sit in his lap and climb him like a tree and i'm like what's tea what did i miss like what happened was there a new development did he like do something like spicy other than like exist truth be told i never paid attention to what this guy looks like to see a bunch of people thirsting after him surprised the shit out of me because i've only seen like maybe two people up until this point talk about how much they want to like be twisted like a pretzel by him i didn't know huh. that he was hot. I'm not opposed to seeing a very large man soaking in water for no reason. I, I'm still a human woman, but you know, it, it's all kind of sudden. I feel like I just got tossed into the deep end of a conversation that I, I wasn't aware of happening. Yeah, um, it's working, okay? It's working, that's the whole, that's, that's it. That's like, I'm glad that, I'm glad that it's happening. Bro, stop, you're distracting the masses from theory with your body yeah no that's that's the intro that's the intro to theory okay that's how this works 
Um, how do you manage your ADHD when getting out of your normal routine? Like in Chicago now, something that I struggle with constantly. Um, I have the same routine. What are you talking about? Like, I, dude, look, Zin Tower, micronized ke creatine capsule pills, nicotine gum, an assortment of diet caffeinated beverages, including white monsters, wake up at the same time. The only thing that's different is that I don't get to work out that much, but that is literally, that's how I do it. I basically make sure that like, and, and, you know, having money actually helps a lot with this, but I basically make sure that like everything that I do to the best of my ability is, is uh, identical to everything I used to do at home. Okay. Bench that skinny dude with you to not lose gains. The skinny dude is March. How the fuck are there so many people who don't know who March is? That's crazy. Um, you have time to eat if you want. You want me to order some room service or something? Yeah, we're we're not. Well, we're. I thought we were waiting for the micro USB. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's fine. We can wait for it. Cause uh, thank March for another banger episode. They're thanking you for another banger episode. Um, for when you go to Chicago, per currently estimate two thousand five hundred people at the. Does they expect a thirty to forty k according to the organizers? Damn. Chat March is Hasanabi boyfriend. Yeah. <sighs> so, all right, let's get into the news, folks. Let's get into the news and let's do it. The Midwest is anything but mid or west. It's true. Okay, let's get started. DNC day one, President Joseph Robinette Brandon is going to be delivering the keynote address tonight. Uh, maybe I'll be there for that. I don't even know if I will be. I don't know if I'll attend that one, but I could potentially okay now let me tell you okay uh i did not get this level of access that this man has right here i don't know if they just like set up their camera right here or if they have news stations but like the dnc should have given me i'm not kidding when i say this the dnc should have given me like a cnn style fucking permanent studio okay they fucked up this morning, our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, our chief Washington correspondent, John Carl. Mary, you got caught up in all those storms yesterday, but let's talk <laughs> about the speech tonight with President Biden. Going to be a bittersweet moment for him, but he'll get a lot of love in that hall. Fox News briefly mentioned influencers getting credentials for the DNC. I was reading that apparently, uh, in addition to Joe Biden speaking tonight, there are during the week, there are going to be five social media influencers. And a bunch of social media influencers have wound up with credentials because uh, as every campaign knows, something like half of Americans get some of their news from social media. Yeah, myself included, except problem is, I think the people that are speaking that they are giving uh, talking points to or like allowed to speak at the DNC, which I never would have done that anyway. But the people that got the fucking, you know, who got one of the talking slots, that fucking chick, Olivia Juliana, who literally was till the very last moment riding with Biden. The Democratic Party is so unimaginably washed in this regard where they just literally, they, they're like, oh, it doesn't matter if you have no organic momentum. It doesn't matter if you have no like real fan base or whatever. As long as a DNC staffer said we should give you one, but then my boss asked if you still burp into the microphone. If I get one. Yeah, this is trying to reach out to that coveted Zoomer who hasn't said shit about Gaza since November, pushed the Josh Shapiro for Veep campaign, and was a shameless Biden bitter ender until the minute he dropped demo. Like, there is not, there's like eight fucking people that are actually like this in this age range. And what I find really funny about that is that all of those eight people are also at the DNC. So who the fuck is this outreach for? The other seven people that you didn't give time slots to? Like, this is why it's so ridiculous. Like, the Democratic Party, what are you fucking doing? I'm not saying give me a fucking time slot. I don't want to talk at the goddamn DNC anyway. But having said that, you know, like, figure this shit out. It's crazy. This person's got zero juice. This person's got zero momentum. This person's got zero motion, dude. What the fuck are you guys doing? Who the fuck's out here being like, oh, man, I'm such an Olivia Juliana head, you know? They got no aura. Yeah, she was at Gen Z for change and then dropped them because, um, because you know, she wanted she had higher aspirations to be a fucking Democratic uh, Party staffer. 
She genuinely thought Texas was going to flip in 2020. It's like, yeah, this is like, let Austin speak, dude. Austin's got more fucking clout and more motion than this person. But um, in any in any case, in any case, um, what? You're so jealous? No, dude. I don't want to fucking speak at the DNC. What is wrong with you? What are you, fucking delusional? But there's like a million people they could have talked to before this person, okay? But good morning. When you go to the DNC today, so I went to the DNC already earlier today, and I mentioned it, but I don't think you guys heard it. Maybe you're just now trickling in, but basically I fucking went into the DNC already to get my goddamn credentials, and I couldn't even get my goddamn credentials. So that's it. Like uh, that, that, that was my first interaction with the DNC. Later today, uh, later today, I will most likely go. I think the UAW actually might have slotted me in for Sean. I'm not even joking. And I don't know if it's like an actual event or if I have an hour with him. The UAW might have uh, might have given me an entire fucking hour with Sean Fain, I think. I'm trying to figure that out right now. I, dude, I really need like... Can you tell the clip channels not to upload any of this? Because I'm sure you want this on your main channel. Yeah, don't upload this stuff. Anyway, um, why do we ever doubt you? Another prediction of yours has come true. Yeah, I briefly talked about this yesterday. But hey, guys, remember when I told you that uh, the Trump supporters are going to be so insane that they're going to start making fun of Tim Waltz for having weak sperm? I mean, I'm sure there's a clip. Someone logged it at the time. Someone must have logged it at the time. As you guys know, I said this immediately. As soon as, the, as, soon as the ticket was Waltz, I said he has an IVF baby. He had two children with in vitro fertilization. Trump supporters are going to turn around and say his sperm is weak and start making fun of him for having weak sperm because they're fucking insane. And guess what? We're there now. They're carrying around J.D. Vance sperm cups. Apparently, the reason why they're carrying around J.D. Vance sperm cups is to make fun of how, how, how weak Tim Waltz's sperm is, apparently. But I, don't, I still don't know the veracity of this. I don't believe it. I don't want to believe it. I'll be honest with you. Like, there's no, there is no way, there is no way that they're like actively pushing for this. I, I, like, it's got to be like four or five people max if it's real at all. Because honestly, honestly, like them making fun of JD Vance having weak sperm is one thing that's expected. Okay, but them carrying around like JD Vance, like a cup that says like JD Vance's sperm, like I don't think that that's the case. There's no shot. There's no fucking shot. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, in terms of Republicans being abnormal, once again, Ian Miles wrong. Uh, the Malaysian bandit who should be arrested and prosecuted for his crimes against the beautiful Malaysian state by being an unconditional dick, lo uh, dick rider and a loyalist to the state of Israel should be actually fucking tried for treason and maybe executed by the state. But here he is tweeting... Many people are saying AOC looks alluring and is making bedroom eyes at political influencers at the DNC pre-show. Thoughts. Some people just need, uh, you know, I always say like lobotomy, but honestly, I think maybe euthanization, okay? Like, you know, put, like what the fuck are we doing? Just looking forward to uh, at the convention this week. I mean, I love meeting people from all different parts of the country and to have everyone from Puerto Rico to Alabama all in one room. Learning about each other, talking about each other, that's my favorite part about this. And have the best convention. Great to meet you. Anyway, I haven't even seen the inside of this fucking place yet, but but yeah. Um now uh, the on the other on the other bracket, cringe, Trump war room, which knows what normal is, is saying this is cringe. Now let's get back to work, shall we? <laughs> wow, dude. That that's fucking cringe, man. <laughs> that's really cringe, dude. Another right wing freak out, totally normal shit. That's what our election is about. Our election is about understanding the importance of this beautiful country of ours in terms of. Yeah, I mean, she did the fucking she did the the thing that she did last time, which is like unburdened by what has become. You know, she did that type beat. And that's why uh, they're saying she's like cringe and, and weird. But it's like you can be coherent and then turn around and say the most unimaginably weird bullshit someone has ever fucking heard, which is what Republicans usually do versus someone who just kind of sounds a little off.
okay? Someone who just sounds a little fucking uh, zooted or makes, you know, some sense, but not the most sense when they're fucking off the cuff, teleprompter, off the teleprompter. Uh, people would most likely, people would most likely uh, prefer the word salad over the clear and coherent insane shit that Republicans say on a daily fucking basis. <laughs> Bill Clinton DNC speech. Mr. Trump, I flew with Jeffrey Epstein. I knew Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein was a friend of mine. Donald, you're no Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. But yeah, let's get back to it. Let's see what the fuck they're talking about with the uh, Joe Biden DNC day one speech. He will. And, and bittersweet quick. is exactly the right word for this. I mean, what imagine just a month ago, Joe Biden thought this was going to be his convention. And now instead tonight, he's going to walk out on that stage and pass the torch to Kamala Harris. He will tout the accomplishments that he and Harris have achieved together, make clear he thinks she is the future of the party. And of course, he has been praised for his decision to bow out of the race and endorse Harris, even though the party didn't exactly give him a whole lot of choice in the matter. So this is going to be an emotional emotional moment for him, also a chance for him to cement his legacy. This is likely the largest audience he's going to have as his now 50 plus year career in politics, you know, begins to wind down. And the challenge then for Harris is to take that baton, run on her record with Biden, but also make clear what she would do differently and make this her own. And John, you and I have been covering politics for a long time. It's really hard to think of a more consequential summer in American politics. You go back to that debate less than two months ago, June 27th. I mean, we have an entirely different race than we had a month ago. This is uh, a transformed election. This convention is entirely transformed. I mean, a month ago, they had to rip up a script they had effectively been working on, really, George, starting to work on this convention two years ago. Now you have Kamala Harris, uh, who was a vice president standing in the shadows of an unpopular president, now suddenly the undisputed leader of a newly energized Democratic Party. And George, what I would look for here is Harris, as Mary suggested, to subtly but clearly distance herself from Joe Biden and interestingly also from herself and from the positions she took when she ran in an ill-fated campaign four years ago for the Democratic nomination as somebody at the far left of the party now. She is a transformational figure or wants to be one who can appeal to the left of her party, the center of her party, and also to disaffect, disaffected uh, Republicans unhappy with Donald Trump. Meantime, John, former President Trump seems to be disoriented by the change. His team keeps saying focus on the issues. He keeps focusing on Kamala Harris. Did this motherfucker just say far left? Unhappy with Donald Trump. Meantime, John, former President Trump seems to be disoriented. Informational figure or wants to be one who can appeal from the positions she took when she ran in an ill-fated campaign four years ago for the Democratic nomination as somebody at the far left of the party now. She is a transformational figure or wants to What are you saying? Yo, people just be saying shit, okay? People just say shit, dude. I swear to God, mainstream media, people just say shit. Like, what are you, what do you mean far left? The fuck do you mean far left? What are we doing here, man? T far left of what? She was never, oh my God. Okay. The word communism just like doesn't mean anything to the mainstream media anymore. Yeah. Warning for protesters. Jack Posobiec is present. Please do not engage. Nice. She was called the most left senator or something at the time. Probably what he's referring, referring to. Yeah, I mean, she's not, and she wasn't th back then either, by the way. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, so far left is, is wild. Um, call to order Minion Moore, chairman of the Democratic National Convention Committee, Honorable Jamie Harrison. Okay. Uh, here, this is, the, this is the lineup. That gay guy candle co. <laughs> Thank you to that gay guy candle co for the speakers. Um. Remarks and video intro from Brandon Johnson, mayor of Chicago. Uh, confirmatory ceremonial vote. Blah, 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 blah. Welcome remarks. Peggy Flan Flanagan, lieutenant governor of uh, Minnesota. Okay. Uh, member of the U.S. House of Rep, Illinois, Lauren Underwood. Video from Rich Logis, former Donald Trump voter. Remarks from Robert Garcia. Joint remarks. All this stuff is like whatever. Uh, it's not really that interesting but i mean there's a lot of um there's a lot of labor people on this lineup so that's cool that's the first day um and then remarks project 2025 chapter one introduction michigan state uh senator honorable gina m raimondo kathy hochel governor of new york 
Sean Fain is going to be speaking. OC is going to be speaking. And then that's got to be a mistake. Wait. <laughs> AOC and Hillary Clinton back to back? What the fuck? Am I crazy? That's crazy. That's, that's why. Okay. Oh, hell no, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, and then Jim Clyburn, Jamie Raskin, Jasmine Crockett, Grace Meng, and then joint remarks from uh, radical liberal Raphael Warnock. Remarks by Dr. Jill Biden, introduction by Ashley Biden, and then the Honorable Joe Biden, the Prezo, the Prezi, okay? Um, Bernard Sanders is going to be speaking on Tuesday night. Interview with Hill Dog? No. This interview is outdated. They're going to be swapping out Hillary Clinton with Austin show. Yeah. You literally don't show up on, for me on my phone unless I search you up, even though I'm subbed. Yeah, dude. They're fucking suppressing me. Nah, dude. Mobile is just broken. Okay? That's all this is. I don't think they're, like, suppressing my free speech here. Okay? With a measly 36,000 uh, viewers one hour into the fucking broadcast, you know? Um, it's just a mobile app issue. Twitch app is cooked. Help me out, bro. Where can I get that dope shirt? You can't. I'm gatekeeping. Pisaki and pretty mobile shots. This is like kind of annoying because I would like to fucking also hang out with the, with the Prits. Okay. And it's like, he was one of the fucking interview targets for me and they didn't play that game at all. Okay. It's like, oh, do I have to be in the administration? Do I have to be a Pisaki bomb? Do I have to drop a Pisaki bomb to be able to get fucking big prits? Do I have to drop a Pisaki bomb to get the big prits interview? What the fuck? Is it because my big boy card has been revoked? Is that what this is? Is that the issue? Fake champagne socialists get your money up more? Yeah. Uh, my lord is so fucking nasty. I know that's the point, but damn. I am sucking you from the mobile app. What does that even mean? That's my lord. It's not worth it, brother. I don't care. If I get to do it with the Prids, I'm fucking down. I'll down that shot. All right, let's see what the Fox like, News people are saying like, about the influencers. Like a third of people under 30 get their news from TikTok. So bring in the TikTokers to make Kamala Harris look better. Yeah, and you know what? This, I should say, is something that this administration has been doing for a while. I mean, they had a briefing at the White House with social media influencers. You recall at NATO, they invited like 20 or so right. to come in and cover the, the NATO summit. Um, I <laughs> don't know how that went over or if people watched it. On I mean, that's dumb as fuck, bro. I'm sorry, but that is hilarious. Okay. Yeah, let's get the fucking influencers at the goddamn NATO summit. Like what? Dude, we're really figuring out exactly what these kids like. You know what I mean? Hey, if you're under the age of 35, you know what you're fucking primed about, dude? NATO, okay? It's like, bro, there is like eight American citizens that vote at like outside of the DMV, specifically Northern Virginia. Who the fuck is voting for NATO? There is no NATO voters, man. That's not a thing. God damn, I'm fucking losing my mind at how stupid the Democrats can sometimes be. This is like old Democratic Party shit. They're shedding a lot of this stuff, in my opinion. Okay? Talk, but they are increasingly aware that that's where people get their information, and they're trying to reach those voters. Uh, and some polling I, I saw a couple days ago shows that Harris is doing well with TikTokers, so maybe it's working. Guys. The TikTokers right. will do some talking. Thank you very much, Jackie. Yeah. Uh, What's funny is that you don't make Harris look better. It's conservatives who make themselves look worse. Yeah. Single issue voters who's concerned about energy stability in Germany. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I was really worried about making sure that Finland joins NATO, actually. Um, and I will be writing in Biden because he got Finland into NATO. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, that's the situation. That's DNC day one. one. Far left figurehead Kamala Harris is transforming the fucking party. Didn't realize you were cosplaying to the DNC. What, what do you mean cosplaying? Can appeal to the left of her party, the center of her party, and also to disaffect, disaffected uh, Republicans unhappy with Donald Trump. Meantime, John, former President Trump seems to be disoriented by the change. His team keeps saying focus on the issues. He keeps focusing on Kamala Harris. 
Yeah, and, and he really is has been thrown off his game. He, You've heard him complain privately and publicly about the fact that Biden was swapped out. They were prepared to run against Biden. Uh, Republicans have a clear strategy. That is, focus on the issues. As you heard Rick say, uh, you have uh, Republicans. Trump has an advantage on crime, on the border, on the economy. Uh, but he is not focusing on the issues. His is all about attack, 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 personally attack, and attack some more. Okay. It's pretty funny. Trump will be like, we're doing a policy on the economy speech, okay? We're doing an economic policy speech. And then like 90% of the speech is being like, every Salvadoran is a rapist and Venezuelans are, are doing new, they're inventing new versions of raping white women. And also um, Kamala Harris is, is also participating in this secretly. Uh, they want the American blood pool to look less white. And it's like, what what happened? Like, the, where's the fucking economic policy? He just gives a brief moment. He just does like one fucking take on it where he'll be like, yeah, I'm going to slash prices by half. Won't tell you how he's going to do it and just moves on to the high notes. to the things that he wants to talk about. He's like, bacon is four times the price. Why? Guatemalans, they're eating all the bacon, folks. No more supply and demand, believe me. No more supply of bacon. All the Guatemalans, they ate the bacon, folks. This is why I will stop the Guatemalan migration. Everything. Everything is just tied back. Okay, Don, thanks very much. We're going to, of course, have team coverage of the Democratic National Convention all week long. For more on what to expect tonight and in the days ahead in Chicago, Ed O'Keefe joins us. Ed, as I listed off the speakers, it occurs to me a contrast with the Republicans who did not have many formers on their stage. There were no signs of the Bush family in Milwaukee. Good to see you. Welcome to Chicago. Uh, tonight, uh, as we said, is all about President Biden. They're going to give him a big tribute, focus on his decades-long career, and then they're going to turn their attention to the future with Harris at the top of the ticket. In a final push before the convention, Vice President Harris spent Sunday rolling through the battleground state of Pennsylvania alongside running mate Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. They stopped by a campaign office. We're, uh, we're doing it. Yes, yeah, because Hillary Clinton is exactly everyone wants to hear from. Yeah, dude, I don't really understand what like the motivation is for a lot of this stuff. I just I don't get it. Like who the fuck's like, damn, dude, you know what would hit right now? A Hillary Clinton speech. There's just never been a moment in my life where I felt that. And I don't think there's any human being that actually feels that way either. I'll, I'm, I'm actually, I'll say it. I don't think that's a real thing that people want, okay? And rallied supporters in a wide variety of places while fielding questions about her campaign. I very much consider us the underdog. We have a lot of work to do to earn the vote of the American people. She also took swipes at former President Donald Trump. Anybody who's about beating down other people is a coward comes after Trump also campaigned in Pennsylvania over the weekend and tried to make his case on the economy. We will make America affordable again. But he once again veered into personal attacks on Harris's intelligence and appearance. I am much better looking than her. I think I'm better looking. <laughs> I mean, what? What? What a wild thing to say, man. He's just, <laughs> he's just going crazy mode. <laughs> I am much better looking than her. I am. Everyone knows it. Believe me, I'm so much better looking. Much better. I'm a better looking person than Kamala. Riffs like that have Trump allies concerned about whether he can stay on message as Harris has made gains, most notably among likely women voters in a new CBS News poll. If you have a policy debate for president, he wins. Donald Trump, the, provo uh, the provocateur, the, uh, the showman, may not win this election. Trump and Harris are both now racing to define what her administration would look like, as our new poll also finds more than a third of registered voters say they don't know what she stands for. She'll use this week in Chicago to try to answer those questions, as allies say momentum is in her favor. You've seen the level of excitement and energy rising and rising, and it frankly hasn't crested yet. That excitement has thousands descending on Chicago this week. Security is tight as law enforcement prepares for large protests opposing the war in Gaza. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson, who will speak at the convention tonight, says his city is ready. Protecting this city is my top priority, and I will continue to do that. 
Protests started last night with about 500 people marching down Michigan Avenue. The police were there on foot and bicycle, making sure everybody was all right. More protests with larger numbers are expected in the coming days. A big one coming today. The coalition to march on the DNC starts around midday here, Tony around the United Center. You know, Ed, let's go back to Vice President Kamala Harris, because when you're in that job, you get a plane and you get a mansion in Washington, D.C., yeah. but there are no promises about your political future. She's going to have to, starting tonight, go out there and get it. Yeah, What absolutely. she need to do? Well, you know, one of the most interesting findings in our poll, about 36% of voters say they don't necessarily... I'm a big fan, but does it feel like a which side are you on moment for going to the DNC and participating in it versus staying outside with the protesters? I know you say being inside you'll function as a protester, but will you really ask for an arms embargo to the face of politicians? Because that seems like the only thing that wouldn't be wouldn't be endorsing the Dems right now. No, I'm I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna fist fight. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> We're gonna. I I think I will. I think I'm gonna. He kind of ate you up. Not gonna lie. No, you're right. He did. Uh, my my loyalty my loyalty is with the Dems, baby. You already know. Hey, listen, I got the hat to prove it. Okay. Hey, man. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this. Hey, lady. Sorry. Okay. I'm saying, uh, man, is in like you know. Listen, lady. Okay. I'm a goddamn member of the fucking media. Shut the fuck up. Okay. The fuck is wrong with you? My job is to cover the fucking news and give you fucking commentary, okay? Shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna go spit on fucking Mehdi Hassan and Ryan Grimm and all the other journalists for, for literally being inside of the fucking press pool too. I'm gonna fight Prem. I should have fought him today. I should have literally hit him with a bow and been like, yo, what the fuck? It's a real which side are you on moment. Why the fuck are you inside the DNC covering the DNC? <laughs> oh yeah yeah ryan would body you little pup it's true he bodied jesse waters um do you think that they're gonna ignore palestine they gave so here's some good things and some bad things about this okay one uncommitted dnc will host ever first ever panel on palestinian human rights panelists uncommitted co-lead Leila el abed a surgeon who served in gaza party organizer with family killed in gaza by israeli forces minnesota attorney general keith ellison former rep andy levin Arab American Institute President Jim Zogby, okay? And and it, this is, like, pretty solid, pretty huge, right? That's, like, a pretty big deal. But also, simultaneously, on the other side, you got the DNC coming out with a statement against, like, sexual violence that Hamas committed, which is, like, so nutty when you think about what's going on in Israel right now. Pretty incredible, though, totally believable that the final DNC platform is a one-sided condemnation of sexual violence, and it's aimed at Hamas, even as the Knesset engages in a full-throated debate as to whether acknowledge the rape of Palestinian detainees is okay or not. Like, their entire platform on the Israel shit is just, like, so incredibly one-sided, okay? It's, I know TikTok issue of the day doesn't matter, but there's a really interesting shift on leftist TikTok of... Other minorities getting increasingly frustrated by Palestinian pro-Palestinian creators as asking marginalized groups in America to sideline their oppression and rights by committing to not voting. Um, no, you are being increasingly annoying. And the shift is, is just incredibly fucking annoying. Americans are just so fucking selfish and don't give a shit about anything else other than themselves. Ain't nobody's actually having a conversation like that. Okay? Palestinian rights are human rights. Palestinian rights are the same as, as black liberation. Palestinian liberation is the same as black liberation in the United States of America. Palestinian emancipation is, uh, is directed towards an, an entire government that literally trains the American police departments, okay? There is a direct through line. I don't care. Like, it's just so fucking stupid. I'm sick and tired of having this conversation with people who are just idiotic, Okay. This is a conversation that we're having with people who are just too stupid to, like, read into it a little bit. I don't care. Fuck TikTok, okay? Jesus Christ. I don't necessarily know what she stands for, what she would do as president. That's a higher percentage than Donald Trump. So she's got to spend time this week, the whole party does, explaining again who she is, what she's about, what she would do. The poll also found, interestingly, the reason she's starting to close the gap. Those younger voters and voters of color are now starting to show up 
in numbers that suggest they can close the gap. So she's got to keep focused on them and what they're interested about, which is why you're hearing so much this week about the future. What will you do for you? What would this change in the country mean for you as you get older? You see a lot of focus on that as well. As soon as that Rose All girl called black people colonizers, you lost me. I'm going to fucking lose my mind. Okay, dude. Fuck Palestine then. Okay, you're right. They deserve to be genocided. <clears throat> okay, you got it. Okay, they deserve to be genocided. You're right. Israel actually doesn't train the American police department and treat into treating black people the same exact way that the IDF treats Palestinian people. You're right about that. Fuck all of the truth. Okay. One TikToker said black people also participate in American colonial actions. That is a, that is a reality is, a, is abject reality, but that pissed you off. So fuck that person. And fuck this movement. You're right, dude. What do I always tell you? I'm a white guy, okay? I'm white. Fucking people get mad at me, say I'm racist all the time. Does that stop me? Is my allegiance, my allyship conditional? Is it fucking transactional? Are you stupid? Get morals, get a fucking backbone, and shut your stupid ass up. Okay, I am not having this fucking dumbass conversation with you dumb motherfuckers over and over again. Okay, it does not fucking matter. It does not fucking matter. Okay, grow a goddamn spine and grow the fuck up. Okay, God damn, dude. People are so fucking whiny. They're such little babies. Like, you literally don't give a fuck. You just saw it on TikTok and you it just, you saw it on TikTok. And the Republicans are right. It's just young people that saw other young people talking about this shit and just became like pro that thing because it was like the hot thing to be uh, in support of, it seems. Okay. What the fuck? What the fuck's going on? Like, if you, if you drop a cause like that, then you weren't really with it anyway. Okay. Hopefully others do not have your, what is this? Oh, shit. Hold on. I gotta send this to Ryan. God damn, I gotta get this every day, by the way. They they give you fucking press passes every day, which is hella annoying. Everyone with draws in their own small gated community of fear to a larger form. They stay inside their little ponds. What? Yeah, easier way to revoke them. That's true. Um, but, you know, more than anything, she is famous but unknown, right? A face and a name people know. Why is it your job to assuage someone's conscience for ignoring a genocide? I just don't, it's just like so fucking frustrating. People just go, oh man. You're right about Palestine, but you also remind black people how white people talk to black people when they don't have time for their issues. What are you talking about? Like, how, dude, dude, like, do you think being pro-Palestine is a pro-white issue? Or is it like entirely comprised of white people? What the fuck is going on? Okay, bro, what, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you actually saying? I miss this. All the DNC libs come back to this community every two years. It's just like, it's crazy to me that people become so unimaginably selfish in this situation. Nobody gives a fuck. Okay. No one cares about your personal opinions, dude. What the fuck? This is the, it's got the same exact energy as like people being like, man, I want to be pro BLM, but honestly, it really hurts my feelings when black people talk about white people a certain way. It just hurts my feelings. Okay, you're just doing that for, like, Arabs, I guess, now, you know? It's not like it's it's a... Being pro-Palestine is not like exactly known as a white issue, you know? It's literally the opposite of what the chatter say, where minorities are acting the same way to the Palestinian issues that white people act towards minorities' issues. Yeah. I just... I fucking despise how geared people are off of TikTok. All it took... All it took, it seems, for people to, like, completely lose their minds, Okay. On this issue was like, do a little bit of identity politics, okay? Do, just drop a little bit of identity politics and hyper-individualism. I deal with this on a daily basis in my chat. It's fucking poison for solidarity. There is nothing more annoying than a fucking consistent chirper in the chat going, I don't like the way you said a certain thing. And everybody fucking hates that guy. In this community, everybody fucking hates that guy on TikTok. Everybody hates that guy on Twitter. But also, simultaneously, everybody loves being that guy, okay? Everybody loves being the guy who uses emancipatory language, who uses fucking academic terms, who uses, like, 
intersectionality in an effort to like bring the conversation back down to me, 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 my own personal feelings. And it is so cynical to utilize an entire group of individuals for that purpose to be like, you know what? This isn't just about me. This is about how the entirety of the black community is feeling. Actually, all black people feel this way. Actually, I'm a black person and you have to listen to me. It's like, no, I don't. I don't have to listen to you at all. You're fucking delusional. Shut the fuck up. Okay. No, it's when a new cause comes along and old ones aren't as important. It does hurt white people's feelings when to talk to another BLM. And I, in order to talk about it, when black people constantly have to pussyfoot around their feelings, what are you saying, dude? What are you fucking saying? It does hurt white people's feelings when to talk another BLM and I order in order to talk about it. Then black people constantly have to pussyfoot around their feelings. Okay. You just said that sucks. You just said that sucks. And now you're just being like, and Palestinians should also experience that. Is that what you're fucking saying? While simultaneously being like, yeah, the act of ongoing genocide, I don't really give a shit about. Is that what you're saying? Is that what it is? Some of you... I could fucking jiggle some keys in front of you and you would be like, oh my God, this is the most entertaining, most enthusiastic I've ever felt about anything. Okay. No, that it's not Olympics. Okay. Then why the fuck are you bringing this up? Uh, it's such a funny situation because like black lives matter or like black liberation in America and Palestinian liberation are completely fucking intertwined because you're talking down to me. I am talking down to you. Okay. I am because you're chirping about some irrelevant bullshit, okay? The fuck do you mean? There's a goddamn stadium full of people in here. I'm a fucking 33-year-old adult, and I'm getting some fucking last-minute radlib-ass bullshit centering a fucking entire genocide around your own personal feelings while you simultaneously fucking act like you are the representation of every black person in America. Of course I'm going to fucking chirp at you. What the fuck do you mean? You know exactly what my you know exactly what my perspective is on on black liberation in this country. What the fuck are you chirping at me like I'm like, "Um, dude, you're talking down to me." Yeah, sometimes you deserve to be talked down. Okay? What the fuck? Holy moly, dude. Guys, sorry, as a, you know, as a, as a disabled uh, black trans woman, I can no longer be pro-Palestine because apparently people are chirping on TikTok. Like, what? Okay, cool. All right. Like, well, what are we doing? Well, what's going on? What the fuck's happening? It is especially stupid because, one, everybody fucking despises this, like, identity politics, tone policing, nonsensical bullshit. That's number one. But it's so goddamn effective. It is so fucking effective okay it is so fucking selfish but it's so goddamn effective especially in like circles that try to be as woke as p physically humanly possible where people genuinely don't want to be disruptive they genuinely don't want to be harmful to marginalized communities that they are not a part of okay i don't play that fucking game okay you could take it to the dsa meetups if you want you can snap all you want at the dsa meetups we don't play that fucking game here okay it's so stupid i've never played that game i will never play that game you could say it's because i'm white and pro uh, it perhaps is a part of that for sure okay yeah i have a lot of fucking privilege i try to use it for good this is not a space exclusively for you you're not going to ever be able to dominate the conversation in here and if you come in with that energy that disruptive energy that record behavior i'm going to fucking shove it back down your throat i'm sorry okay if there's a actual fucking if there's an actual genocide going on with american weapons with money that could be going back to your underserved communities but instead is going to fucking build bombs so you can laser black and brown children overseas and you're over here being like well this doesn't center my own personal feelings on the matter i'm gonna tell you to shut your bitch ass up okay you can't fucking expect me to sit there and be like oh i'm so sorry let me clean up the language real quick. You're right, actually. Let me lean into your own fucking personal delusions about, like, what you saw on TikTok. It's fucking ridiculous, okay? Please, stop. Yeah, sound familiar? From the river to the sea is a genocidal slogan that hurts my feelings. Oh, but I'm pro-Palestine, by the way. Exactly. It's fucking ridiculous. Holy shit. What are we doing here, man? What the fuck are we doing? Anyway... As a black person, why the fuck are you still on this topic? It's fucking old as fuck now. I know, but people still want to chirp about it. Okay? DNC is way, way too close to old block. You're picking up that Sosa energy? Yes. I just, I hate this shit. I hate this shit so much. It's also not true. Yeah, like, these are the same liberals who never went into the street during the BLM protests. A lot of same people fighting police brutality or fighting against the genocide. Exactly. 
Bro, there was kafias at every fucking BLM protest. Like, the fuck are we talking about, dude? There's Palestinian flags at every Black Lives Matter protest. People have been at the forefront. And even if there wasn't, it still doesn't change the reality that, like, your allegiance and your allyship should never be conditional. Okay? It should never be conditional. That's so stupid. Oh, man. Like, I don't give a fuck. Trans people, black people, Palestinian people could all collectively come together and, and tomorrow be like, fuck this Hassan guy. Okay? Fuck him. He's a rich socialist. He's a hypocrite. He's a piece of shit. He's a white supremacist. He's transphobic. They could say that all day, every day. That is not going to change my calculation. It is not going to change my moral compass even a little bit. As a matter of fact, many of these marginalized groups have online said a whole bunch of insane shit about me in the past. I don't give a fuck, okay? I'm not some weak, no spine having baby who goes, oh my God, I can't believe it. The people that I'm advocating for are are very mean to me. They don't like me. So I guess they don't deserve like emancipation. What, what, what are you saying? What kind of fucking selfish bullshit is this? It's not being morally superior. Okay. Shut the fuck up, dumbass. That is not what I'm saying. It's not about being morally superior at all. It's just, it's just about having morals in general, something that seemingly a lot of people do not have. Don't necessarily know her life story. Don't necessarily know the work she's been doing the last few years or what she would want to do. That's what this week's got to be about because it's a four-day ad, essentially, yeah. for her with the potential for a lot of news to be made as well. Yeah, she's going to define herself, not let Republicans exactly. do the defining for her. Ed, yep. thank you very much. Uh, some of the thousands of delegates say they are remaining uncommitted as a protest over U.S. support for Israel. CNN's Doni O'Sullivan is here with me. Uh, Doni, you've been speaking to some of these My delegates. Goat. I was talking to Congressman Jackson about this. My freaking goat, Doni O'Sullivan, baby. Um, I think it's very selfish of you. Okay, dude. Earlier on in this program, whether or not it's going to, you know, present a major disruption. A lot of people don't know the difference between having morals and only having an instrumental relationship with morality. Yeah. They should have an instrumental relationship with the top of the hour ad break, which is my instrument of oppression, my mechanism of oppression upon those who are unsubscribed. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, you are going to get cooked. You're going to see it. If you no longer want to see those ads, you need to subscribe or else you are going to see three minutes of ads, $5 or for free. It's that simple. Twitch Prime is free. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Use the three minute ad break now. Okay. Thank you, Floki. What? People that personally think that, like, the pro-Palestinian movement overall are anti-black or some shit, and that's why your uh, allegiances with the pro-Palestinian movement are on shaky grounds, for the record, okay? If, if people feel that way, then, you know, they just don't, they're, they're weak, okay? They're thin-skinned, they're weak, and they don't have, like, any coherent, consistent fucking worldview. It has nothing to do with... It literally has nothing to do with that at all. It has nothing to do with your own personal opinions, your own personal feelings, okay? And everything to do with advocating for justice, advocating for emancipation, okay? All right. Hassan, can you please interview the RFK Jr. supporters protesting outside the DNC? Yes, I will be uh, if I have the sh chance. One of them came up to me in an RNC, or in an RFK Jr. fit, by the way, and dabbed me up and was like, Hassan! Oh, it was that guy. This is the guy, I think. This is literally the guy. Content, baby. Content. You can't possibly believe that there aren't people in there working on behalf of a Republican victory. I know you can't discuss this because you couldn't possibly tell me exactly how a right wing infiltrator would act in that space. In what space? In the pro-Palestinian camp? Is that what you're saying? You think there's, like, right wing inf infiltrators? There's right wing, right wing infiltrators in every space. Okay. I mean, here, look at this. Heads up, neo-Nazi ally and right-wing troll Jack Posobiec is trying to interview DNC protesters undercover outside the United Center in Chicago wearing a cafe over his face. Don't speak to him. There you go. Yeah, you asked. Here are the infiltrators. The infiltrators don't even have to be right-wing. Let's not pretend the only right that unconditionally support Israel. No, I think that Chatter was trying to make an argument that, like, Chatter was trying to make an argument that, like, they are there are uh, right-wing infiltrators in the pro-Palestinian space Specifically being like, don't vote for the Democrats. It's like, I think people can make up their own fucking minds on this issue. There are a lot of people who also personally think voting for Trump would be helpful for the Palestinians. I don't believe that, obviously. That's something that I've routinely criticized. I think it's fucking ridiculous. Having said that, however, having said that, however, there are people who do believe that. Okay, so just 
remind yourself of that reality. I'm here in Chicago. Right. What are you hearing? I got a pee. Hey, Jim. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be probably tens of thousands uh, of protesters expected outside the arena. Uh, but when it comes to here on the convention floor, I mean, obviously the Democrats want to tell a story of remarkable unity and, and the party getting behind Harris. Uh, but for pro-Palestinian activists and demonstrators, uh, they also want to bring that point up here on the convention floor and they want answers uh, from Harris on Gaza. And we spoke to some of them yesterday. We've got 30 uncommitted delegates that are representing over 740,000 uncommitted voters nationwide who voted uncommitted as a pro-peace, anti-war vote in the Democratic primary. This is a meeting of uncommitted Democratic delegates here in Chicago on the eve of the Democratic National Convention. But it's not sustainable for our own government to fund the mass killing of civilians. Folks become delegates at their state party and then they come to the National Convention and they're either committed to the candidate, to one of the candidates, or not. In our case, we're not committed because we haven't heard what we've wanted to hear. We're looking for a ceasefire. We're looking for a strong commitment on a ceasefire. We're looking for an arms embargo uh, for us to stop sending weapons that are contributing to the genocide there. I represent uh, some of the over 101,000 voters in Michigan who voted uncommitted as a pro-peace, anti-war vote. Nobody wants to see Trump in November. We are a very anti-fascist movement. We are actually doing what we can to save the Democratic Party by saying, listen, VP Harris, there is a key base of over 730,000 anti-war voters who are telling you that we want to see you turn the page on Gaza policy and save Palestinian lives. What do you want to hear from Harris in Chicago this week? I want to hear from Vice President Harris how it is that she's going to turn a new page on Gaza policy from the destructive and disastrous policy of the last 10 months to one that saves lives. You got to meet Harris briefly yes. in Michigan. We wanted to be able to speak to her directly. And the fact that Michigan voters would want to support her in the November election, but we can't do that right now while our family members, our friends, our loved ones are being killed with U.S. funded bombs. I told her that we need a policy shift that will save lives in Gaza. My, my community is telling me that they're losing tens and hundreds of their family members. And she said, it's horrific. She's been incredibly empathetic. I do have to say that more, we have seen more empathy and compassion from Vice President Harris, but that is not enough. Palestinian children can't eat. Oh my God, Asan, you forgot Kaya. Oh, shit, I was supposed to bring her here. Words. Is there more hope in this movement right now with Harris at the top of the ticket than there was when Biden was there? I think that in general, we would all say we're cautiously optimistic. There is a little bit more wiggle room, we feel like, with Vice President Harris. We've already seen her change the rhetoric a little bit, but words are not enough. And Jim, you hear that cautious optimism there. I will say one of the delegates also told me that... Like, I'm not kidding when I say this. The DNC should have given me a fucking slot like this, okay? The difference it's in bullshit. the engagement between when Biden was on top of the ticket versus when Harris, it was night and day in terms of how oh, the right. campaign is engaging uh, with these activists. Also, a lot of folks, a lot of Democrats saying to people like this, well, you know, if you don't vote for... What's your take on leftist channels who are criticizing uncommitted voters for even talking to Harris? I don't care. Yeah, they're silly, okay? It's ridiculous. There is a fucking election going on, okay? There is a fucking election happening. Obviously, it is a pressure point. It quite literally is the smart thing to do. Wait, what did you say? 9-11 guy? Um, you do understand, I'm, I literally have a press pass. Like, I have a badge given to me by the DNC. They just didn't give me a slot like a permanent space that I can stream out of. That's it. I don't know why people are, are like this. I'm using the hotel internet. It's pretty simple to extract concessions. You need people to talk to Harris? Yeah. My girlfriend cuts Prisker's hair and his wives. I can link you. Have your team DM me. I don't have a team, man. This is me. How does it feel to have that DNC badge? Seems exciting. It It's fine. I saw you mention in a random video about skateboarding pants to Grifter because you wore $1,000 pants. When did I wear $1,000 pants? Grifting for what? Liberals are trying to cope that the pro palestinian protests are not their own potential voters trying to put pressure on a key issue. Yeah. You might help Trump and that's kind not of surprised they didn't give you a slot. No, not like a speaking slot, but like a permanent space inside of the DNC where I can stream. 
going to be good for Arab Americans or for Gaza and for this cause, <laughs> your cause. Um, and those folks say that's that's not our issue. That is for the Harris campaign to answer those questions and to, to change our position. And I hate to ask you an, an impossible uh, question to answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Which Thank is, you, Jim. You know, Make what, my life easy. <laughs> Thanks for that. What are the expectations that things will remain peaceful, that things won't get out of control? Are you getting any sense of that from these activists you're talking to? I mean, every all the activists that we've spoken to very much say they want things to remain peaceful. They want their voices to be heard. They want to remain peaceful. Uh, but of course, like this, uh, like any demonstration, right. particularly on this issue, particularly w also with the idea of, of potentially counter protests, and also there could be agitators uh, in these crowds outside the next few days. We'll be outside as will our colleagues be. Uh, but yes, hope they are hoping, as everybody here is, that things remain peaceful. Yeah, you have to assume that outside agitators are going to try to infiltrate Absolutely. some of these yeah. demonstrations, try to see what kind of trouble they can stir up. All right, Donio Sullivan, thank you very thank you. much. Really appreciate it. All right, as the Democrats work to showcase party unity inside the convention hall, not everyone is on board with Kamala Harris outside on the streets of Chicago. Uh, we've I've been showing those to you. Tens of thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters are descending on the city to show their discontent with the Biden administration's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. It's a familiar challenge for the vice president, who's become pretty well versed in handling the hecklers. I'm here because we believe in democracy. Everyone's voice matters, but I am speaking now. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. Inside the convention hall, though, another small crack in Democratic unity with 36 uncommitted delegates on that floor. They represent hundreds of, uh, hundreds of- This is so funny. Obsessed with the DNC rendering of the creator platform. The, uh, Donnie, Donnie sent me the, not this rendering, but like the actual photo of the platform earlier this morning. He's like, I think they're going to put the creators there. <laughs> they got the Unreal Engine render. Every time I watch that, I get irked again. Twitch Mobile keeps closing your stream and pulling Kaisen S stream up without me touching anything. It's annoying as shit. Dude, I don't know what the fuck is going on with Twitch Mobile, okay? I'm not the boss of Twitch. I don't know why you guys like... I fear that maybe you... Um, I fear that maybe you believed my haters when they said, like, I'm the real boss of Twitch. Like, I actually control Twitch. Uh, I don't. There's a lot of people who have been talking about Twitch Mobile. It sucks. Why do 40,000 people watch this dumbass? I don't know, man. I don't know. A question I ask myself every day, honestly. I'm a very fortunate person. I think that's, uh, that, that's what it is. I think some people just want to know. Um, you getting robbed yet? Yeah. Oh no, there's an emo twink in here that I was unaware of and he is robbing me. He is robbing me, dude. Um, March hasn't even begun and the media is already working overtime to downplay the attendance. I mean, it, it hasn't begun yet. It's like filling in. The pile of unclaimed signs of the pro-Palestine protest march on the DNC an hour after it began. Organizers say they were hoping for 30 to 40K. The crowd is maybe one-tenth of that size. Crowd coverings less than half of this three softball-sized softball, uh, softball -sized field size uh, park. Only if you brought Kai to stop him. I know. I fucked it up. Thoughts on Chicago as a city? I like it. Um, is it only for today, this particular protest? I think there's like different demonstrations throughout the week. But this is like supposed to be the first day of the protests. Thousands of American voters and Democrats as well. We're now learning that three Democratic senators who are running for re-election in competitive states will not attend this convention. You see them there on your screen. Let's discuss this all and more with CNN political commentators Kate Benningfield and Scott Jennings. Uh, Kate, I, I was just talking to Gary Peters a second ago and I asked him about what um, what he thinks that the protesters need to understand about what Harris can and cannot do. And the very first thing he said was that we need to get to a ceasefire deal. There is a little bit of choreography about this particular moment where maybe they're on the cusp of a ceasefire deal. Maybe she can't say a whole lot more about this issue at what risk happened? of jeopardizing that. But you've got thousands of protesters on the streets wanting uh. to hear more. Well, that's often true in foreign affairs and national security. There are things going on that you can't necessarily talk about publicly. Um, but I actually, I think on this, she's been quite public about where she hopes to get to. She's been very vocal that she wants to see a ceasefire now, that she wants to see hostages released. She has spent a lot of time making very clear that that's what she, President Biden, and the administration are pushing for. I think, look, 
The Democratic Party is a big party. It's a big tent. People are going to speak up and be heard. That's all right. I think you've heard her handle it uh, both with strength, as I would argue. Uh, at this point, do you think there's any chance that Kamala will take a more aggressive stance against Israel? I don't know. I don't know at all. And um, like I said, there's some good things. There's some good things uh, in terms of like having the uncommitted vote, uh, vote platform, like have speaking say uh speaking space um overall though i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know um so here i mean it's not likely it's not very likely the likelihood is not high um there is also another aspect of this that we're going to be talking about after this part of the coverage is done because um uh, because there's also the the ongoing ceasefire negotiations, and there's obviously a lot of misinformation surrounding that. The clip that you showed uh, before we started talking demonstrates, but also you've seen her really be clear that she ultimately shares their goal. And at the end of the day, if you are somebody who's protesting the DNC because you're frustrated about where things stand. And there's been a lot of reporting now about what the CNN person said, by the way, Kamala cannot slash will not say anything more because of the ceasefire negotiations. Yeah, I think that, you can't live stream inside the DNC. Wait, what? Where did you get that idea from? You? No, I never said that. No. No. Okay. Chatters. I can and will live stream from inside of the DNC. There's two different... There's one live stream, but there's different methods of live streaming. Okay? The method that I'm using right now is my remote desktop. This is my regular ass stream that I have at my house. It's the exact same. Okay. Down to the fucking Zin Towers. Okay. This is Wind Towers. So normally this setup that I have, I was planning on putting that in the DNC and operating from inside of the DNC is my base of operations. However, I have the backpack that's down there right now. The IRL backpack. I am, I am going to use the IRL backpack to do a live stream from inside of the DNC. Okay, I'm also going to use the IRL backpack to do a live stream, not only from inside of the DNC, but also from the uh, pro-Palestinian protests that are happening. Okay, my plan at right now is to cover the news, then swap it to the backpack, then um, venture into the pro-Palestinian protests, and then after that, um, go to the DNC. Okay, that's the plan today. Have you been talking with them about it? No way security lets you bring a backpack full of tech junk. Dude, this is the Democratic National Convention. What are you talking about? Do you know how much fucking media is there? How do you think these guys got in? <laughs> I'm not like a random guy. Meet and greet at all. No, you cannot buy me dinner tonight, King. Sorry. And I will not be doing a meet and greet either. Got in Israel. Donald Trump as president, who has said that we need to go into Gaza and finish the job, is not a viable option for you. And so I would really say to these protesters, look at what Kamala Harris is trying to do to get to a ceasefire. Phonics, don't ever say not to be an audio nerd. You're the biggest fucking audio pervert in the chat. Okay? And no, we don't have lavalier mics. Or we do, actually. We don't... Uh, we have lavalier mics, dude. What are you... Bro, this guy, bro. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We have lav mics, okay? We do. And listen to what she has to say, because she has been very, very vocal about this. When you say shares their goal, whose goal exactly? Because some of these people on the street, I can assure you, do not have goals that you want inside some the tent of the I Democratic agree Party. I agree with that. In fact, some I would do. say, I would say most of them don't. Said, uh, some do, and some have said incredibly anti-Semitic things, which she has called out. Some oh my fucking God, shut up. Shut up. Oh God, these guys are such fucking freaks. Um, defaced property, uh, which you remember she, I think the day after the property was defaced at Union Station. She put out a really forceful statement about it. Absolutely. But broadly speaking, the cohort of people who want to see a ceasefire uh, in Israel and Gaza, she shares that goal. Oh, my God. Any chance you'll meet up with AOC this week? Yes. Um, to those who are rightfully disillusioned by the DNC, take part in the grassroots movement. Just do something, anything. It's our responsibility. Yeah. Look very demure, very mindful. Thank you. I try to be as mindful and as demure as I possibly can every day. It's such a cowardly way to cover They're this shit to be like, wow. Um, Offshell report reveals shocking information about anti-Israel protests or DNC from Fox News. Um, there's been a lot of anti-Semitic statements coming from the protest narratives. There's been a lot of anti-Semitic statements. Yeah.
Won't anybody think about the property damage? My girlfriend's work in the blue carpet. We work out of DC. I worked at NASA. Let her know if you want a tour of NASA. I met Andy Bashir yesterday and at you on Twitter. Hell yeah. Why are they always anti Israel protesters? Good. I mean, they should. They should say it's anti Israel protesters. Instead of saying it, they're anti Semitic protesters, this is an upgrade. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucking Fox News, bro. Fox News literally normally talks to them like, talks about these people like they're fucking human scum, like they're barbaric monsters. Oh, you are connecting it. What are we at? Uh, what are we at on the? Oh, is that a better camera or worse camera? Okay. All right. Is it gonna be too like shaky? That's what I'm worried about. Okay. Go to your little nerdy convention already. I want to meet all your nerd friends, dude. What are you talking about? They're good afternoon from Western PA. Have a good stream. Have fun. Just know that when you head into the United Center, that you'll be in the same building that Michael Jordan, the goat, played in. Show some fucking respect. I agree. Um. I mean, look, I, I, I think Michael Jordan is awesome. I just think LeBron is better, but that's it. Like, I do you think I do you think I have an issue with Michael Jordan's basketball? Like, what are you crazy? Um, um, yeah. All right, let's just turn it off for now. And then, okay, Cornell West is at the March on DNC rally. This is from literally like right here. It's just it's starting to pick up some steam. Should we just go? We should just go. Actually, um. Can you speak to Big Cat and PFT Commenter? Can you sneak them into the DNC? They'd make it a lot more fun. Yeah, all right. You know what? Fuck it. Let's go. Let's roll out to the protest. Um, so uh, we're going we're gonna to head out to the protest for now. Uh, we're going to go to the protest first. After the protest, we're going to go uh, to... Uh, we're going we're gonna to head out to the... Uh, we're going to head out to the DNC as well afterwards. Why do you sound so low energy at the moment? Get fucking hyped already. It's hard, man. It's hard not to fucking... Dude, I just... I flew in. I didn't sleep that much. You know, I'm trying to fucking keep this shit together, chat. God damn it. Give me a fucking break, you know? What is this? Charlie Kirk? Republican Secretary I, I of State in the state of Georgia. Day. What's your name? You said Parker? My name's Parker. We have a yeah. Republican governor and Republican Secretary I, of State I, in Georgia that approved our elections. And Donald Trump said that wasn't constitutional. Right, relax. Donald Can Trump tried to undermine our dude, constitution. You're, you're in I just walked in. I'm here to just learn. I'm hey, just you're absorb. you're an anti-patriotic, anti-constitutional person crashing our party so let me because ask you, you tried question. to stop our question. democracy. I got one question. Donald Trump called the Can Secretary of State of Georgia. Nothing gets me nothing gets me as libbed up as like seeing one of these guys seeing like these incredibly nerdy, like lanyard wearing Democratic Party operative influencers get up in the face of a Republican commentator. It gets me so fucking libbed up. I despise them when they're talking about like, um, Palestine is not an important issue. Let's not talk about that. But God damn, do they pop off on the likes of Charlie Kirk and shit. It just, it does. If there's anything that unites the Democratic Party or unites the progressive left in general with, with, with the like the entirety of the left umbrella in this country, it is just like being in the presence of a right winger for three and a half seconds. Okay. Like I can't stand some of these motherfuckers. I don't know about this dude. I don't know him at all, but I can't stand some of these motherfuckers when they're talking about like, you know, Corey Bush getting owned or whatever. And it's like, you're gross. Um, but the moment that they just chirp at a person like Charlie Kirk is awesome. To Georgia and told him to find him some votes. What is a woman? Oh my God, that is so fucking weird, y'all. Maybe you should meet one. He said, what is a woman? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's that about, but oh God, what is the audio? Oh, you can tell them to come back in a little bit. We're leaving soon. The audio is fucking ass, dude. Because you're with the guys with the vasectomies. You're on the vasectomy side of it. I'm not fucking anybody currently. So like I don't understand. Do you understand? They will. They will cut this if there's with this language. I, I do. All right. Freak. Um. Yeah, I did see the unhinged uh, Israel post. I did. Um. Are we ready to let it rip? But I just gotta disconnect this. Uh. I gotta take the thing off. Right. Okay. Let's. Um. Is there like a continuous uh C span potentially, like a continuous live feed? that I can tap into to play while we're um, while we're on our way so I can swap in and out. Yeah, I did see Donald Trump poking the bear, the bear being the Swifties. Here it is. Trump's bizarre AI stunt to win Taylor Swift endorsement backfires. He just straight up posted like a he just posted a fake. Bro, this is just a straight up live feed.
That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like live commentary and shit. C-SPAN might have like actual full-blown. A nurse, you know, we don't know how to be silent. We will never stop advocating for our patients. And we see all the Palestinian people as our people. No, I'm not going to use Cinemarxism's feed, bro. And That's like literally at the same crowd that we're going to. Not in our oh my God, you don't understand what I was looking for. I'm looking for like, like, uh, like, you know how YouTube channels will have special reporting during times like this, like ABC. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like an actual fucking live stream. Like a like the CNBC live stream that's not going to be ending, and they're just going to be doing the I fucking. I felt a shift even from what I heard from constituents. Thank you. On a good amount of worries a few months ago, and now it's readiness, it's positivity, um, and I think that there's a belief, and I have confidence that Chicago handles large events really well. Yeah. Chief Snelling and the Chicago Police Department has been on top of creating this plan. Eva! We're going to make sure that everything Eva! goes seamless Eva! for all the visitors visiting Chicago and then have the whole nation watching Vice President Harris uh, um, from the convention floor. I was going to say, is it an interesting balance for you that you know, in one way you are making sure that the city uh, presents well to the rest of the country and all of the other delegates who are here in town this week, but you also are representing your constituents as an alderman. So how do you balance uh, those all two? Right, because I imagine that one. you probably have heard all from right. some of your constituents, and you know, then we're maybe swap a, a it little up. traffic or all of those kinds of things that people are dealing with. Yeah, absolutely, though. You never take your alderman hat off, and <laughs> yes. I never take my Democrat hat off. So um, we've heard concerns, but really recently, we've heard so much excitement that I have constituents who let me know they're going to try to get starving. as close to the UC as they can, almost Straight like up. how when the crowds at Soldier Field camped out by Taylor Would Swift. Yeah. I don't know if they'll be able to hear anything Was in the good? same way, but there's that curiosity in Chicagoans. This is such an important election. Um, so I'll be bringing both. Yeah, it's a little bit. All right, chat. Intrigue. This is what we're, we're swapping it out oh, in a second. Damn, this guy's good.